Hi, everyone. This is um, Peter Chu uh, from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. And today um, I'm honored um, to talk about this topic, transperineal prostate biopsy under local anesthesia. So first, why do we do biopsy transperineally, but not the classical transrectal, or someone call it transfecal way? It's because of the sepsis. Now there are there is a definite risk of around like one to five percent, depending on uh, which country and which hospital. Um, but this is a definite risk after a trust prostate biopsy, and everyone should know that. And the good thing about the transperineal biopsy is that there is almost no sepsis. And because there is almost no sepsis, um, you can do actually more biopsy cores, and they give, this gives you better sampling. And obviously, as you don't go through the rectum, there's no parietal bleeding. And finally, there is less trust probe related prostate deformation during biopsy. And I'll show that in the next slide. You can see that when you put in a probe, the prostate is inevitably being deformed um, by the trust probe during a transrectal biopsy. And when you do a fusion biopsy, it actually moves your target away from, from your prostate. The bad thing about the transperineal biopsy is that it is usually more painful, and traditionally, the patient needs spinal or general anesthesia. The other bad thing is about more acute retention of urine, which is a few times more than the transrectal biopsy, especially when you take more cores or in larger prostates. So let's move on to the transperineal systematic biopsy. Now, transperineal biopsy is usually done traditionally in a saturation biopsy manner with a brachytherapy grid, taking one biopsy core every five millimeter, resulting in approximately one core per gram of prostate. So if you have an 80 gram prostate, you have 80 cores, which is a bit too much in this era. The Ginsberg study group published an article um, in the European Urology in 2013 um, they tried to characterize transperineal biopsy into eight different sec sectors from the anterior, mid, posterior, and basal sectors, taking a total of 24, 32, or 38 cores, depending on the size of the prostate. But the, in this group, um, most of the biopsies were done under anesthesia. This is a publication from a Dr. Jeremy Grummet's group in that um, in a group from Australia, they showed that transperineal biopsy with a modified Ginsberg protocol with a slightly less uh, number of biopsy cores of about 20 total cores, showing that there was actually zero emission for post-biopsy infection. Dr. Rick Pulpit, another expert in this area, showed in a recent publication in BJU International, shows that in initial outcomes of the local anesthetic freehand transperineal biopsies in the outpatient setting is well tolerated. Even when patients are being taken um, up to 24 cores, and more than 90% of them actually was done under pure local anesthesia. And he used this device called the precision point to help him to do a uh, one uh, single puncture per perineal side. And in this paper, you can see that, well, it's not a painless procedure, but in most patients, the, the pain score ranges from two to four, which is uh, well tolerated. The most important thing about transperineal biopsy under local anesthesia is the local anesthesia protocol. As the patient put in a lithotomy position, um, for my, practice, I usually put prepare about 1% link came with adrenaline, a total of 20 to 30 mils for each patient. And usually I block the skin area first, and then after the skin area, under a real-time ultrasound guidance, um, the needle will be inserted straight to the area around the neurovascular bundle, inject some local anesthesia, and then move, in, move on to more medially, still between the prostate and the rectum, and then inject along the path from there, from the periprosthetic area, 
to the pelvic floor muscles down to the subcutaneous area. Down below here is an optional area, which I think um, especially important for multiple skin punctures is that uh, I would direct the needle to the, to the area anterior to the prosthetic apex. Not everyone do that, but I think for multiple skin punctures or if the lesion is predominantly anterior, I think that helps with the pain control. I usually do 1% lignity with adrenaline because I can achieve um, a higher maximum dose. Say for a small size man of 60 kilogram, I can give actually 42 mils. Um, even though I usually use around like 20 to 25 mils, additional doses um, are required in some cases, but only in very selected cases. As I come from Hong Kong, I would like to highlight this publication from my dear colleague um, showing that a 10-core transperineal biopsy under local anesthesia is very feasible. And this is the experience of the first 100 cases in Hong Kong. And the match um, case in the transrectal approach shows that there was a 4% sepsis rate in the transrectal biopsy, while no patient had any fever uh, in, the, in the transperineal group. For a freehand transperineal biopsy, we usually do one puncture per side. Uh, we first started off with a very cheap instrument called the angiocatheter with the 14th French. Um, but eventually we changed to a metallic troker instead of this plastic troker. The main learning curve is that we need to align the ultrasound probe with the biopsy needle by free hand, which is slightly more difficult than doing it with a precision point, obviously. But after 10 to 20 cases um, per operator, um, usually most people can do this um, quite comfortably. This procedure is actually well tolerated um, in biopsies up to 24 cores. In more than 250 patients, the pain score is between 2 to 3.4. So it is, um, could be well tolerated. This is a schematic diagram of a sagittal view of um, during a transperineal biopsy. This is the perineal skin which is at a distance from prostate. And this is a side view truss probe. We first insert a metallic troker for biopsy needle insertion. And note that we don't insert that very deep into the prostate, I mean, around the prostate, because we want to have a larger angle of, um, uh, of movement, more freedom of movement. And then we insert the biopsy needle. Now, this is the mid core. But when we do the anterior core, we just adjust the metallic choker and the biopsy needle towards the anterior, and we can take the anterior core very comfortably. And the, the whole needle is all along seen on the ultrasound as the probe and the needle are both on the same plane. And this is the posterior sector pointing towards the peripheral zone. As said, the learning curve is mainly to keep the probe and the needle in the same plane to, en to enable visualization of the whole needle, but not only part of it. It is actually dangerous if you can only see part of it because you might be overshooting the needle into the bladder or outside the prostate. This is the precision point perineal access system, which is actually a very nice system and it will enable people to shorten the learning curve in, use it, in doing the uh, local anesthesia, uh, single, single puncture, transperineal biopsy. But uh, unfortunately, in my place, um, we don't have um, the resources to buy this expensive instrument. So we, in the end, still use the, the metallic choker um, as our uh, main way of doing um, um, the transperineal biopsy under local anesthesia. Another way, if you don't have that precision point, but you still want to um, do as if you're doing a precision point, there is this, actually this um, biopsy guide which is attached to this um, ultrasound probe. And then I'll insert another metallic choker through this and into the skin. And with this, I put in um, the multi-hole needle guide to the ultrasound probe. And then I insert a metallic choker. And then I insert a biopsy needle. This is the mid-core. But using this approach, if I need to take anterior cores, sometimes I need to compress the prostate with a larger degree to get to the anterior part. 
and it might be a little bit more uncomfortable for the patient. But for the posterior zone, if my insertion site at the skin is pretty high, it might be actually more uncomfortable for the patient and the truss probe is angulated towards the posterior and that we might result in a poor ultrasound signal of the prostate. And with this, if it is a really large angle and we don't want to um, deviate the probe so much such, such, such that we induce a lot of pain at the rectum, would actually use a lower level of the grid and the lower skin entry. You can see that our previous site uh, insertion is around here, but now we insert it at a lower hole and the lowest um, skin insertion. And with this, we, we don't need to deviate the probe that much and we can take the posterior core more comfortably. So transperineal fusion biopsy under local anesthesia. There are multiple different software platforms, uh, different machines to um, do this MRI ultrasound fusion biopsy. All of them work, uh, especially under anesthesia, but if we want to do it local anesthesia, it's another story. Because when patient is under local anesthesia, although the, the procedure is um, well tolerated, even under LA, but the patient might move occasionally during the biopsy if the pain control is not 100%. Like as in this case, on the left side, you can see that the patient actually moved a bit. And the green line is actually the MRI prostate border. And it's not fitting to the live ultrasound well because the patient and the prostate move. And with this, there usually for many different um, software platforms, um, we'll use the mechanism of motion compensation to move um, this MRI prostate border back to the live ultrasound border such that we can target, uh, go back to the target more accurately. But however, any motion compensation may lead to inaccurate targeting as the movement of the prostate may not be in the same plane. It might be multiplanar and we might not be able to catch it with surgical plane ultrasound. I usually use um, this Coelus Trinity machine for uh, my fusion targeted biopsy under local anesthesia. It uses an organ-based tracking mechanism and I usually use the mini-grid as um, my biopsy guide. Organ-based tracking means before every targeted biopsy call, an automatic 3D ultrasound scanning of the whole prostate will be performed to check whether the needle trajectory falls onto the target before you fire the, the biopsy gun. After firing, another ultrasound scanning to match the needle track on ultrasound will be done to the reference prostate. And for this, we have a good quality control to, to um, let the operator know where um, your biopsy needle has uh, reached. It is ideal for fusion targeted biopsy under local anesthesia. Just a few slides on about uh, how I do with this um, MRI ultrasound fusion biopsy. First, of course, we need to mark the prostate contour and the lesion on the MRI. And I need to stress again, again, a good local anesthesia is extremely important to keep the patient stable during fusion biopsy. If a good LA could not be achieved, the patient is better put under monitored anesthetic care or even spinal anesthesia if we're doing a targeted biopsy. It is then followed by automatic ultrasound acquisition. So we'll have, and, and then followed by the marking of the ultrasound on the screen. Elastic fusion will follow, and then we'll do the biopsy. As in this case, there's a target lesion here. In this case, there is a tiny five millimeter pyrus four lesion at the left peripheral zone in a 90 gram prostate. So this was actually targeted and the actual biopsy position was actually um, marked manually um, for very fine tuning of, um, of uh, localization. And as you can see, for this lesion, uh, these targeted cores uh, were positive for Gleason 3 plus B cancer, while the core, which is actually one to two millimeter away, just inferior to that, um, was actually benign. And all others were benign in, in, in other sectors. This is another case with a five millimeter Pirates 4 lesion at the uh, left anterior peripheral zone lesion. And uh, we target that accurately. And we also do copious, um, I mean, systematic biopsies. Um, such that uh, we will know that 
despite this is a four plus four um, Gleason score, uh, high grade cancer on this side. Um, all others, there is no any other high grade cancer in other um, areas of the prostate um, with an extended uh, systemic biopsies. There was actually three plus three, one core over the right transitional zone. Um, we, event, we, we eventually treated that with a high food. We could also do a full grid brachytherapy grid um, systematic biopsy on a pure local anesthesia. But to be frank, this is more painful for the patient. It is tolerable, still tolerable, but you know, more painful, of course. But what I want to show you is that the plan template on a transperineal brachytherapy grid, what you think you are aligning your prostate cores might not be exactly. Looking at the right side, you can see the actual core location might actually deviate as if you're not attentively inserting the needle, um, the needle cause might, uh, the needle might actually um, have some deviation, which is very, very common in transperineal biopsy. So in conclusion, to achieve an accurate transperineal fusion biopsy under local anesthesia, adequate local anesthesia and given in the proper way is the key. A good fusion biopsy machine is also important. For me, I would like to choose the organ-based tracking mechanism um, to follow a moving target of moving prostate before each biopsy core. This ensures accuracy and avoids the need of repeated manual motion compensation. Thank you very much.